Hello and welcome to a new video about Prometics. Prometic controls. Next control possibility. Since it would take quite a while to draw this, I've already prepared something for us and I want to to, to analyze this, this thing here. Yeah, I want to analyze this thing. I'm going to explain it step by step, as usual, not too fast. And this is the drawing I'm talking about. What we see here, yeah, this cylinder here is, is pressing something. Yeah? A coin or something like this, prägen. Yeah? So we, we want to make apply a certain amount of pressure, a certain amount of force, that's it. I want to apply a certain amount of force here. Yeah? Therefore, we need to apply here a certain amount of pressure. Yeah? So, this cylinder should form something which is different. Yeah? So, it might be a, a very soft materials which needs to be formed and I need less pressure. And I w maybe it's a very hard material, then I really need to use pressure. Eh? And I want to adjust this force there. Eh? Let's analyze first what is happening. Okay? So here, this is a push button. Eh? If I press this push button, oh, I forgot this, the spring here. And also here. Choo -choo -choo. Eh? So now everything is in rest position. Yeah. If I press this push button here, we will get pressure here. Yeah. I'll simply write it down first. SJ1 is pressed. Yeah. What is causing this? Is if we press SJ1, the pressure can go through here and is now switching QM1. Yeah, so this is this is the result. Yeah? So the result QM1 is switched. Hmm? If QM1 is switched, We will get the pressure from the one line to the four line. This means and and two is then exhausted to three. So this means mm one will start to travel. Okay. Mm one travels out. Travels out. M1 travels up, and at some point in time, it will be at the limit or whatever. Yeah? Then, or uh, it will simply be blocked somewhere. Yeah? Then, here the pressure is rising. Yeah? If the pressure here is rising, yeah? so let's make it three. MM1 is limited somewhere at the output. Yeah. Pressure at PG1 is rising. Okay. Pressure is rising. If the pressure is rising, at some point in time we have enough pressure to overcome the spring load here and pfft, uh, then the pressure from the one side is switched to here. Okay, pressure from the one side is switched to here. This will be switched to flow position. Yeah? So this is actually the fourth thing which is happening. Yeah? Pressure. switches KH1 to flow. So only if the pressure has reached a certain level, yeah, 
we will switch this to flow position. If we have switched this to flow position, pook, QM1 is switched back. Okay. So this is then the next five. KH1 in flow position. QM1 is switched back. If QM1 is switched back, we are in this position again and we will travel inwards. So this is then again the next thing which is happening. So 6 MM1 is traveling in. Mm -hmm. Then we are at the beginning. Huh? And we could start again this with SJ1. Okay. So this means with this spring here, with this spring here, I can just the force of this of the of the rod of the cylinder. Huh? If I put the spring here to high tension, I have high force. If I put this to low tension, also uh, again, already at low pressures here, we will switch and I will just touch it. Touch it, touch it. Okay. If we put this to high tension. <laughs> so this is, this is a switch, pneumatic control, where we can apply or adjust the force which is applied by a cylinder. So it can even be very gentle. Yeah, so this is an I think an interesting, interesting form of control. Next time we're going to talk about a possibility on how to to slow things down. But you know, we want to to move something. Yeah, and then wait a little bit and then do the next things. Yeah? So time valve. Next thing that you're talking about, a chromatic control, which is involving a time valve. Yeah? How this is working, we will discuss exactly like this. Yeah? So, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.